Okay, so we're going on to part uh, 74, which is next. Um, that's this one here. And I just wanted to give you the title, because I didn't give you the title in the last video. It's Line 15 D2, SETI WOW Alien Contact Index. The ideal girl says, YouTube video blogs, Victoria Stafford, a psychic investigation. So what I did is um, I show you the website where I set up an index of all the videos, and I also show you uh, which each of the videos are from 1 to 73, just a quick uh, review to show you what's going on. If you have just started the series, there's around 100 videos with this all together. So I just went over a review for myself as well as for you guys as well. So the next one's going to be line 15 E. And that'll be part 74. This one I'm going to name line 15 E, Wow SETI. Beautiful crop circle, alien DNA skull, contact, earth radio, M82, NGC3034. So I'm going to be looking at the data on the 15A and then I'll be coming here to do my notes. Okay, so I have to go to 15E. So basically I started with 15A and I've broken down each of the videos into 15 to 20 minute segments just so it's easier on you and easier on me as well. Okay, so we're just going to scroll down to 15E. 15D was about the black hole and the circles, thermal radiation. That's where we were left off. And, sorry, there's 15E, okay. So this section is about the alien radio signals, DNA beings discovered on Earth. And, uh, okay, so something in there is producing an unusually regular radio signal and this is an image from NASA ESA STCL aura now that came up with the um, mathematical equation which was 3 1 and then 3 and then 1 11 11 and 1 okay So this mysterious radio waves are emitted from a nearby galaxy um, they, around 1.13 p.m. 14th of April 2010. And Stephen Battersby in Glasgow discovered this signal. Okay, update on 13th of December 2010. The object is still a puzzle, says co-discover Tom Luxlow. It was still there the last time we looked, so it's lifetime is now well over a year, he says. We are continuing to monitor this object. I haven't checked to see what's going on recently. There is something strange in the cosmic neighborhood. An unknown object in the nearby galaxy M82 has started sending out radio waves, and the emission does not look like anything seen anywhere in the universe before. Now, as you know, SETI's been sending radio signals out to that area, towards the Kepler region. So, obviously, something's trying to communicate back. But for some reason, they haven't figured out, uh, I don't know if they haven't figured out what frequency it's on or what's going on. He says, we don't know what it is. His co-discoverer, Tom Maxwell, Jojo Bank Center for Astrophysics near Mass Massclesfield, UK. The thing appeared in May last year while Maxwell and his colleagues were monitoring an unrelated stellar explosion in M82 using the Merlin network of radio telescopes in the UK. A bright spot of radio emission emerged over only a few days quite rapidly in astronomical terms. Since then, it has done very little except baffle astrophysicists. It certainly does not fit the pattern of radio emissions from supernova. They usually get brighter over a few weeks and then fade away over months, with the spectrum of the radiation changing all the while. The new source was hardly changed in brightness over the course of the year, and its spectrum is steady. You know, I would love to see this research because remember the spectra color I came up with was kind of like an orangey yellow color. Wouldn't it be cool if it was that color? That'd be really cool. Okay, warp speed. Yet it does not seem to be moving and fast. Its apparent sideways velocity is four times the speed of light. Such apparent superluminal motion has been seen before in high speed jets of material squirted out by some black holes. 
The stuff in these jets is moving towards us at a slight angle and traveling at a fair fraction of the speed of light, and the effects of relativity produce a kind of optical illusion that makes the motion appear superluminal. Could the object be a black hole? Is not quite in the middle of M82 where astronomers would expect to find the kind of supermassive central black hole that most galaxies have, which leaves the possibility it could be a smaller scale microquasar. A microquasar is formed after a very massive star explodes, leaving behind a black hole around 10 to 20 times the mass of the sun, which then starts feeding on gas from a surviving companion star. Microquasars do emit radio waves, but none seen in our galaxy is as bright as the new source in the M82. Microquasars are also produced plenty of x-rays, whereas no x-rays have been seen from the mystery object, so that's not right either, Mark Slow told new scientists. His best guess is that still that the radio source is some kind of dense object accreting surrounding material, perhaps a large black hole or a black hole in an unusual environment. Perhaps the phenomenon also happens occasionally in our galaxy, but is more common in M82 because it is a starburst galaxy, a cosmic cauldron where massive stars are forming and exploding at a much higher rate than in the Milky Way, creating a lot of new black holes. Muxlow will report the discovery at the Royal Astro Astronomical Society National Astronomical Meeting in Glasgow, UK today. And, and the website, if you want to check it out, is www.newscientist.com. And then look up for the article, Mysterious Radio Waves Emitted from Nearby Galaxy. This will be blogged on the blog, the Victoria Stafford, a psychic investigation, as long and I'll activate the link there so you can take a look at it as well. So, of course, I didn't know what M82 was when I looked at this. So Messier 82, also known as NGC 3034 or Cigar Galaxy or M82, is the prototype near star, nearby Starburst Galaxy about 12 million light years away in the constellation Ursa Major. The Starburst Galaxy is five times as bright as the whole Milky Way and 100 times as bright as our galaxy center. In 2005, the Hubble Space Telescope revealed 197 young massive clusters in the Starburst core. The average mass of these clusters is about 2 to the power of uh, 2 times 10 to the power of 5 m. Hence, the starburst core is a very energetic and high density environment. Throughout the galaxy center, young stars are being born 10 times faster than they are inside our entire Milky Way galaxy. Again, that's under Messier 82. This is what it looks like. What it looked like back in the year 2000. J2000 epoch, okay, and this is what it is looking like now. See how there's a lot more, um, there's a lot of red gases and a lot of blue gases, and then all this here, and then you've got your blue and your, yeah, so it doesn't look yellow. It looks a little bit yellow right here. See this here? That's the belt, the color that I had come up, something like this orangey. Um, yellow color. So this is a combined Hubble, Spritzer, Kachandra image of M82. Credit goes to NASA, JPL, Caltech, STC, SCL, CXC, and U of A, WESARA, URA, and JHU. And I got that in Wiki under Messier 81, triggering starburst. Okay. So it's Right ascension is 9 hours, 55 minutes, and 52.2 seconds. The declination is plus 69 degrees, 40 feet, 47 inches. And I just thought of something. I found another signal in that area as well. It was at number 15 hours. There's another unknown signal. There's a lot of uh, alien signals coming between 9 hours and 15 hours. And also over from uh, where my galaxy is in the 22 region. Okay, so I didn't know what an epoch was, this J2000 epoch thing, so I looked it up. Specifying an epoch or equinox, e epochs and equinoxes are moments in time, so they can be specified in the same way as moments that indicate things other than epochs and equinoxes. The following standard ways of specifying epochs and equinoxes seems most popular. We have Julian days, which would be JD, and then the number. So for January 1950, um, terrestrial time. See, I still don't understand what this means, okay? But I'm, I looked it up. I still don't get it. There's Beslan years, 
example, 1950.0 or B, B for the Beslan, or T, T, which would be terrestrial time. Julian years is the J number. All three of these are expressed in TT, terrestrial time. Beslan years used mostly for star positions can be encountered in older catalogs but are now becoming obsolete. So you won't see too many of the Bs. I saw a lot of the Js, the Julian days. Those, those seem to be the most popular. The Hipparchos catalog summary, for example, defines the catalog epoch as J199.25, one quarter year after the start of the calendar year 1991. Oh, okay. So that's what that means. Okay. Standard oops, where are we? Standard conventional epochs, which are not Beslan epochs, have been often designated nowadays with the prefix of J, and the calendar date to which they refer is widely known. So J two thousand refers to the instant of twelve hours on the first of January two thousand. And the J1900 refers to the instant of 12 hours midday on 0, January 1900, equal to December 31st, 1899. <laughs> That's so confusing. Okay, so anyways, it, most of your stars and things that you're going to see, planets and stuff, are going to have the, the letter J, and then it's going to have the number, so it gives you an idea of when the picture was taken around the two, year 2000. Okay, so that's um, referred to terrestrial time. I'm sure they'll change it again. Um, there's more on Wiki about this. It gives you the equations on how they um, decide the Julian date and everything. So I'm not going to go over that. It's too much stuff there. But that's something you can look up, okay, um, when I post the link there for you. And let's go take a look at this. This was really cool. Um, that's 15... That, oh, sorry, that's radio sources with jet-related experts. Sorry, that's the star chart from the last video. Never mind. Let's just click on this and give you an idea of what you're going to see. So what it will show you, if you go to this catalog here that I was telling about you in the last video, it shows you the location of this uh, and, a, and a picture of the data, that they, the x-ray signals. This is a catalog of radio signals that they've been picking up. Some are aliens, some are, are not. Okay. So let's go back to this. Okay, so I think F is going to be pretty short. Or E, sorry. I just filmed E. And I think I divided F into something else. So, uh, X, Jeff. Okay, so that's the one I did that one already. That's 15F. Okay, so i got to go back to... There's 15F is the next one. So I'll go over to my notes here for 15E. Sorry, I'm a little out of it this morning. It's 12.18 p.m. on January 20th when I'm filming this. Research was originally done on the 16th, okay? So, um, the other things that I found, while I was doing my search for some pictures for um, the stuff that was that we just went over, I found some more stuff. Um, this is a Google search for a Mayan symbol in binary code, and Vega, Hercules, and M13 have come up in my searching for the SETI signal data. So, there's the um, crop circle that's shown from West Overton on July 28, 2002. And it's, there's the Corona Borealis, which we talked about. M13 came up when we did the Mars 13 thing. Hercules, M57, and Vega. If you remember um, Jodie Foster's movie uh, Contact, Vega was one of the things that she went to where she had some alien contact. So I thought that was kind of cool that it's an actual star thing. Here's an actual star chart here. There's the, the 17th hour, 18th hour, 16th hour, 15th hour. So you know to the right of this, this is Hercules and Corona Borealis. To the right of this is another section here from 15 to 9. So if you look at a star chart, you can see where these radial signals are being picked up. In the Pegasus region, as well as Sagittarius, where the well signal came from 1977. Okay. Actually, that's in the Sagittarius region. I'm not exactly sure how close it is to this region. But I know it's west of it. This is uh, at the www.cropcircleconnector.com. You can take a look there. He's got all sorts of crop circles. Okay. Uh, just so you know, remember I did all the videos and I told you what each of them was about. Um, 
I've added some more. I put in the B2 one and I also added the D2 into the list and that's the list of all the topics that we cover and everything that's on there, okay? So back to this. Um, I was doing the Google search and I came across a star child alien skull that we found here on Earth. It's a genuine 1900 year old bone skull found in Mexico in the 1930s. And it's called the www.starchildproject.com. Um, they found 342 base pairs of alien DNA not in our in our human database. Basically, it's got more DNA on it than us, so it's classified as alien. The last report on the star child skull's nuclear DNA. To have recovered a string of base pairs 342 nucleotides, nucleotides long with no reference in the NIH database is astounding because it means there is no known earthly corollary for what has been analyzed. And it's hyperboreanvibrations.blogspot.com is where I found the picture. This is what normal DNA looks like, okay? We have two strands, and then we have these little strands going in between. The DNA on this one has four strands that was found in this skull. I, I couldn't, there was a picture for it, and it wouldn't let me take it because um, it's an HTML file. So anyways, I just wanted to show you what the human one looks like. I got, it's a helix one diagram. So if you look up helix one diagram or human DNA, you'll, you'll see this picture. And it's got A, T, C, G. I don't know what all these strands stand for. And then I found something else called seven years later on July 19th to the 27th, 1952, a host of unfriendly gray aliens flew over Washington, D.C. I never heard of the term of aliens because I never really did any research about them. But I guess there's some gray ones and there's some other ones. And there's one that's like technically advanced for weaponry supposedly that the government is working with and then there's another suit of aliens that are green and eco-friendly and they're the ones and basically both of them have been leaving crop circles <laughs> about their arguments about what things should be done so sometimes i wonder if these crop circles aren't man-made if you're doing that right i just don't find aliens wanting to take the time and effort to start an argument it just doesn't make sense to me okay basically what they like to do is show their their technology and they like to share technology and so do we um, but in this case with this video series it's not just for one country it's for the whole world to participate in based on the fact that the Mayans say that because the amount of money it's going to cost us to build a faster UFO you need money from all parts of the world to do it so each each set of the world would have to do, take their technology and put it together as one big project. And it would have to be like, a, you know, how you do the, uh, what do you call those people? United Nations, where everybody's like working together. It's the same idea as that, but it, for the, it's for the greater good of the Earth. For us to find a way to see these other universes, we might have to put our heads together and put our technology together to do that. That's why they keep putting these unite unite as one um, crop circles. They want us to work together as a team because that's the best way to keep peace on the earth too, right? So from the Washington Post of July 28th, military secrecy veils an investigation into the mysterious glowing aerial objects that showed up on several radar screens in Washington last night. For the second consecutive week, an Air Force spokesman said, we have no evidence that they are flying saucers. Conversely, we have no evidence they are not playing saucers. The reason I brought this up is in another video, you'll see that these exact same spaceships are showing up again in 2012. In fact, in the first two weeks of 2012, I found a video that they've had over 1,200 sightings, and they haven't had that many. Usually there's 100 in that time period, but not 1,200, so they're wondering why is there so much activity. Well, maybe it's because they've sent a message, and they're all excited because we are starting to respond to their messages and they just want us to figure out how to talk to them um, and it's got to be through pictures these radio signals that you're sending I don't know how you send your signals but it should be with pictures because that's all they understand is pictures because that's what they've been trained to understand so M82 alien radio signals by Coma Varenses so this is the area where the signals are coming from I had to look up where Hercules was. It's in the 17 hour plus 30 
quadrant and Q3, okay? So we're in the 17 hour range, which is over here. Okay, and then there's Coma Barenses, Ursa Major, M82, NCG3034, Alien Radius. I'll have to look this up some other time. I just wanted to know what Ursa Major was. I didn't know what it was. So the right ascension for that is 10.67 hours. Declination is plus 55.38 degrees. So it's, again, we're between 9 and 17. And mine is in the 19 hour. The WOW study signals I found were in the 19 hour region, which is pretty close to 17 hours, right? It can't be too far away. So they're kind of in the same area. So if something's traveling around, you would get a signal from there, a signal from over here, you know what I mean? That's the whole idea. So the crop circle and the well study signal are pretty close, and the alien says he's from that area. Okay, so in the crop circle, he says he's from a certain constellation. So I looked up the constellation where he says he's from, and I think it was the Hercules area. So he's from the 17 hour, and then this one's in the same area. So basically we have a crop circle saying it's from a certain region and then we have an actual radio signal that we are picking up since December 2010 that is coming from the same area that this alien has set on his crop circle. So obviously he's trying to communicate with us and he's trying to respond to the SETI contact messages going out from their satellite. So January 16th, 2012, 8.26 p.m. is when I wrote these notes. This is section E. UFO, crop circle, alien, DNA, skull, contact, earth, radio, M82, NGC, 3034. My thoughts for line 15E. The Messier 82 or M82, NGC, 3034. If you Google sky, this would be your star catalog number. This NCG, 3034 is the star catalog number for M82. I'm assuming that's what it is. Because I kept seeing these numbers. When I was on Google Sky, I didn't know what they were, now I do. While I was looking for some photos for this presentation, this other stuff came up during the search, so I posted it here as well for you to enjoy. i got these little black bugs that like to bug me. They're from my plants. I wanted you to see what the two-strand human DNA looks like. As a quote, 342 pair, base pairs are alien DNA. They're not in our NH database, found in the, and they were found in the star child Skull. I can't talk. Okay, in the star child skull, they found three or four strands of DNA with more components in between the strands. Ergo, it's definitely alien. So, you know how we have these two strands here? I was I didn't want to say anything because... See, we have these two and then we just have individual lines. So, picture three or four strands across and then these things connecting this way and this way. I mean, they're just really multi-connected, really tight. And if you want to have an idea, remember the Fifth Element movie with Bruce Willis in it? And uh, um, it's a great movie. you got to watch it. Anyway, she talks about her DNA being pure, and it's more more different than D in humans. And that's I love that movie. Okay, so in the Star Child Sky, uh, you want to go to www.nowpublic.com, Strange Nearby Galaxy, M82 Emitting Radio Waves, Galactic Text Message. M82 comes from the constellation Ursa Major, where alien radio signals are currently being received from Messier 82 or M82 and GC 3034. I wonder what megahertz it's coming and at the exact coordinates. At as, as this is an extra, I'm not going to search for it. I'm hoping that all of you with alien radio signals will document them on the internet and hopefully we'll get to them at another time. I've never heard of the star child skull before. An interesting find with a different DNA strand considered to be alien. It will be interesting to cross-reference this with other DNA finds in the future. I did a Google search and nothing came up. I'll have to know what the exact names are for the differences in the DNA. I find when you Google stuff like that, you have a smaller search area comes up. Millions of lines of data and no time to go through all of it. I just wanted to get this project done so I could start working on something else. Who knows after I'm finished with this and the crop circles, I can take a look at radio signals. The crop circles and wild SETI signal are pretty close and the alien says he's from that area. The wild signal has Maya 
alien DNA and history tagged within its mathematical equations. The crop circles are Mayan. Did I say man? Sorry. It's Mayan. Symbols and mathematical equations. Could it be related? Something to ponder the idea, girl. So that's the end of 15E, and next we're going to film 15F.